Hey everyone, so we're back for a session today. Many of you have asked um, how I collage with um, my papers and some of the papers I've shown you over here when we did the, um, when we made these, but I don't have in front of me right now, <laughs> the pages I have them hanging up over here. So we worked with the dollar store um, tissue paper and a number of you reached out and said, well, I'd like to see how you actually will collage and use that paper. So we're going to do that today. We're going to do a session right now. Um, several of you also reached out and said that you'd been using tissue paper, but had, hadn't really paid attention to um, whether or not you had the, um, the, the paper that actually has this shiny surface, which definitely does work better because off camera, I did experiment with, I'm trying to find, I bought some more packs of the paper because I wanted to show you guys what it looks like, the ones, I'm walking around my studio if you can hear me, <laughs> what the ones look like that I found at the dollar store um, that have the, fit, the, the packaging. So those of you who have a Dollar Tree could actually get the same papers, but why are these... Oh my goodness, sorry, I don't know. But anyway, okay. So um, we're gonna collage with these. So I'll show you just real quickly how I do that. So I can take um, any number of these. And let's see. Maybe let's grab this one here because this will give me... Um, I'll just tear, tear some off. I like, um, I picked this piece here because depending on the opacity of the paint and then the, um, what you're putting it on top of, you know, you can see through it. So I wanted to do one where I could actually see through, um, you know, a little more clear, clearer, the images underneath with still the painting on top. Okay, so one of the things I do is I'll take my jelly prints and I do a number of things with them. One of the first things I do is I'll take a jelly print and um, you know, just using the jelly print themselves, like if I just do a black and white one like this and then using the um, tissue paper I'll just glue it right on top on top of it and um, and use it like that. Sometimes what I do, like in this case, I will photocopy them. So I use two different jelly prints. This is a jelly print and then underneath is my intuitive scripting. And I sandwich them on top of each other in the photocopying process to create a print that had like a little bit more going on with it. Um, and then I'll, I'll then, you know, collage on top of that. And that just gives me like all different kind of backgrounds. So I'll show you here some of them. I already kind of started tearing some of them up. I was working with some of these. So I thought, well, these are good to show you guys. So here you can see where I've taken the same print on the tissue paper and done them over top of these collages. So you can see them a little closer up. This is another one where the jelly print is on top of the actual collage. Here's another one using a blow. I have blown up one of my, some of my um, Sumi painting lines and then print it. So that gives you a feel. Also over here, I've done, um, I've actually, see, here's the jelly, here's a jelly print or the photocopy of the jelly print. And then I just use both paper and put them beside each other on here. And then it makes a nice, you know, sort of collaged element. Okay, so we're gonna be working with those. So let me just show you very quickly how I do this. It's very straightforward, but you know, we're having fun here. So I will show you what I do. That over. So I just like to use a PVA. You can use anything. You can use, um, you can even use the Yoohoo glue sticks. These things work very well. In fact, I'll use a glue stick just to show you. 
but you can use a PVA, um, any of it. So, just gonna glue this up. So just go ahead and get a good layer. I have great, I've had great success with the um, with the YooHoo. Um, I have found it to really hang in there over time. Um, you know, it doesn't get seem to get brittle. It doesn't yellow with time or anything. I mean, I've been using it for years. I have pieces that I've used it on, and I'm actually very happy with it. But if I'm doing a real a piece that I know is like I'm doing a commission or I'm doing a fine art piece, and I want to really, really just be a hundred percent sure <clears throat> that everything is good, then I use a PVA um, polyvinyl acetate, and that comes a, a number of um, companies make it and you can find it on Amazon. You just put B PVA glues in. And then if so if you want to be a hundred percent certain if it's archival, etc., then that's what I would use. I have a big huge gallon jug I've had for a number of years now. I got it from a store, a place, Maryland bookmakers, that I don't think they're around any longer. But it's PVA. Sometimes it's jade. 403, but it's a polyvinyl acetate. It's a white glue. It's archival. And um, so I use that, but there is that archive, that company archival. <laughs> let me see. This company right here, Archi Arch archival quality. Uh, it's, it's a brand like, the, I think it's this exact brand. I think it's the, the line, the line co. They have a glue on Amazon that's a PVA that's really good. So, you know, you can get it. So this is what the image looks like. So now we have our, our layers like that. And um, so I'll put this to the side. They can keep on drying. And let me, let's pull over a couple of substrates. Let's talk about the substrates we're going to collage on. Because that has everything to do with the success of the collage as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> so two things. I am a handmade paper artist. I make handmade papers. I've been doing it for 30 years or more. And before my oldest was born, and she's now 30. Um, and so I like to collage on really nice substrates, things that already have an interest to it. Yeah, you can just do a white piece of paper, you know, a white, <clears throat> um, even a nice quality, I mean, if you use a nice quality like um, Arches or Reeves or BFK, those are good because it's something about working on good quality paper that makes a difference. Um, this is some handmade paper that then I echo dyed um, using some um, tea and coffee. Now, there's a, a, a few schools of camp, oh, camp schools of camp a few few you know camps on this in terms of the acid so i hear a lot of people say well they put um they're worried about the 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 acid from the coffee and the tea so you know you can put um buffering agents in to um into the water like a sodium bicarbonate things like that that will soda ash that help to um neutralize the the waters and you certainly can do that when you're doing coffee and tea dyeing no problem that only has an effect if you're working on an already archival paper like this is a handmade paper so i don't have any there's no um harmful additives in it at this point because when i pulled and used the paper i used a um a new H, a, a ph neutralizer to make the paper so it neutralize the water but if you're getting sort of like regular copy paper or paper that already has a certain amount of acid in it and and then you neutralize the coffee or the tea that you're putting on it well that'll help to an extent but you're already working on paper that's going to deteriorate anyhow so the argument sort of falls to the wayside there so the only time it really really matters when you're doing these echo dye and i'm not saying don't neutralize your waters go ahead and do it but for those of you who just want to do it and have fun and use it in your artwork and you're like oh my god now i got to neutralize the paper because you've heard someone say it unless you're already working with an archival based paper neutralizing the coffee the tea or any of the other additives really doesn't it's not going to do the 
total job because you're already working on paper that was created and has acid in it, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's just get that one out of the way because sometimes I get comments on that or I get um, people saying, and, I, and you guys are, everyone, I have such great people on this channel, so I'm not saying it's like a nuisance or anything like that, but I just thought I would address it because there are more factors to it than just um, the one. Okay. So this is handmade paper that I tea and coffee dye stained. And um, I like working on this. Now, this is just regular paper here. Um, it may have a small cotton content, content to it. And this has been rust <laughs> and coffee dye. So we have a lot going on in here that's going to deteriorate it over time. But look how pretty it is. It's so gorgeous. So my thing is... I like, and this has a pattern on it. So I like collaging on paper that I've manipulated some kind of way. And here again, you be the best judge of how you're going to use your papers and the pH qualities in them. Okay. Uh, I'll leave that to you guys. We've discussed it a little bit here. Um, but it's much better to work on a piece of paper that looks like this than just like a straight white sheet you're going to get so much more interest out of your collaging. So, and I'm going to show you on two different, I'm going to show you, we're going to collage on both of these substrates. Okay, let me move those out the way. So the first one we're going to work on is this one. So I've kind of already started pulling some elements that I want us to work on. Um, these colors I put together, I thought these work nicely. So this is on handmade paper, already. Um, and you can purchase handmade paper out there, or you can purchase the, the BFKs or the Reeves. If you've got any art supply store, you can also buy it online. And then you can also echo dye it um, to get this kind of quality to it. So here we have some pages that I put together. Here I sort of ripped um, the different copies of the prints and sort of lined them up because I wanted, the, I wanted the, the pattern to change you know, from top to bottom. So this one is going to go on here some kind of way. Now, the beauty, what we're going to see here is, um, is that this is going to get butt up to the edge of here, of this, so that we can keep this on our print. You're going to see, it's going to make such a difference to have this little edge. It just gives uh, a fine art quality to it. it. It just makes everything looks so much better. I'm going to work right up to the edge of my print because I want to, I want to try to keep as much of that, you know, yummy texture as possible while getting rid of this right here. Now, the other thing I can do is we can also using a little bit of, um, stain like the distress stains, you could actually stain this paper out some so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to get rid of most of this white here. So let's start. It's kind of hard for me to grab it because it's like little thin pieces here. But we're going to get it. I know this there. This is thicker. So I wanted to get rid of this white that didn't have any color on. But now that I'm here, I'm just going to let that bleed out because I want to keep a little bit of this, this interest going when I go to collage it just so I kind of go from a place of um, seeing the paper all the way down to not seeing the paper. Like all that stuff matters to me when I'm creating. I'm just looking at all the elements. And so you guys know that I think the thing that you guys like about me is I'm always talking <laughs> through every aspect of my video. I think it's important for you to know how I'm thinking about um, the work. Okay, so. I'm going to just use the glue stick because I um, want to keep this quick. I don't want to spend a lot of time with the PVA. So we'll just use a glue stick, which, like I've said before, we're good, especially if you use the Yoohoo. So let's go ahead and really get some of this on here. So I'm going to really work quickly here so I can try to get two of these in <clears throat> for this video and try to keep it under half an hour. <laughs> but this is the kind of stuff that I do over my studio school. I have modules over there where I'm doing at least, you know, 
each module, which is only $25, I know I have at least 12, sometimes 14 videos. And I'm just, it's sort of like me working through my art journaling. Um, I'm showing a lot of techniques. I do do the jelly printing over there. Um, but I do a lot of mixed media things as well. So it's not just the jelly printing. Um, and so I'm constantly just kind of showing how, you know, sort of like the mind of the artist and showing you how I work. And it's, it's been a lot of fun. So if you uh, want to see more, you just follow the link below this video. And um, I have a free, just so you can kind of see my style kind of thing for those of you who are new to me. Um, it's a Venice flat lay. It's me traveling in, Ven in Italy and it's in Venice. And I'm just showing you how I travel and, you know, create at the same time and, you know, sort of mind of how I purchase things. It's a fun video. A lot of you seem to like it. So you see how I've got that space there. Um, and also on the Patreon, I do this, a similar thing, but we, we the focus is a little different. So I have two different focuses that way. Most people do both because it's, I have a couple of different type of projects going. But anyhow, so this is another piece um, of my, this is a jelly print that was reproduced on, well, I actually did it on this paper, this sort of school paper. You can see the punchella dots on it. So let's go ahead and put this down as a strip right next to, like that see I love the neutrals and you see how cool it looks to have oh, this glue is getting everywhere I'm having problems today aren't I so far we'll end up taking this off but you see how neat that is to sort of to see this edge and um, I probably will do something there as well okay so let's see okay so now this is a jelly print on this uh, Sumi paper. So I wanted to use this. I really like the colors of this. So this is on the, the Japanese uh, calligraphy paper, you see. So this is really yummy. I'm thinking about using this part of it because I think the background really works nicely with what we're doing here. Um, but I think that I was going to, I may just do, let's go ahead and take some of this off. So let's get this off here. This paper is nice too, because it's very thin. You know, it's very, you can see it's, it's a thin paper. And I put this up here, because I also want to use this. This is on this green um, painter's like paper or something I find. I get this at the hardware store. And this is the Golden's bronzy gold on it, which is always so pretty. I like that combination. And so I kind of want to just overlay it here, I'm feeling. So I want to put this like right about there. So let's just go ahead and, and I always like to try to leave, you know, okay, I'm going to flip this over. I like to get a clip. I'll use my clips too so I can hold things in place. That way I get the amount of the print that I want, but I don't get too much, you know, so that I can preserve as much of the jelly print for the next time or whatever. So we're just going to grab this like this. And I also wanted to make sure that I left some of that edge that we talked about. I just like that. You don't obviously, if you, you know, if that's something you're like, oh, you want a, a sort of a different vibe. I'm just showing you how I sort of create them. I like that. And this can go down right here. I'm going to overlap it a little bit there. So I'm, this one, I'm sort of using a gridded system to kind of create this, this print. I like that. Oh, that's looking good. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this one down here. Let me get another piece of scrap paper because I'm getting messy. <laughs> okay, where? Okay, here is my glue stick. So 
ahead and put this down. I love making these collages. I love, you know, using the jelly prints like this and mixing them with other, I think it's important to mix them with other papers and other, um, you know, patterns. I feel like it just goes, maybe flip it like this. I feel like it just really gives a lot more diversity to your work and to what you're doing to have the various things going. I'll say we want this one. I want this to overlap like I originally had thought for it to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and And it just keeping that edge and, you know, having that paper underneath it, to me, really makes all the difference. Let's just get this in here. I'm going to overlap some of it. Okay. And I want to make sure that I leave something at the bottom here. So I'm just kind of tear it like that because I really want that raw edge. And here, I'm going to control it, do the same thing. But let me use my, let me use my, I want to purposely sort of have this raw edge, but I'm also just wanting to control, you know, how that happens. I'm putting my straight edge down just to control it, but so it doesn't rip up so far, too far, but just to kind of get a torn edge like that. Okay, that looks good. So you see what I was doing there? Just controlling that edge so that it ripped, but you know, didn't go crazy on me. Alrighty. So over here, let's go ahead and get this off. Sorry if you hear my dog down there barking. Okay, so, so here we have this. Now I have a little piece up here that I want to do something with. So let's find, let's find a common element. Um, I don't want to use that again. I want a little something different. And maybe I'll go for the orange that I had. Just like a little piece in there like that, maybe. Because there's a little bit of orange in the um in this in the dot pattern there. So just enough to add a little bit of interest, but not too much. I may even flip it and do it like that. So it's even a little less. And then it sort of ties in down here. So let's do that. And let me just get this torn. Because I want it to be inside like that. So there, it just gives us a little bit of, see, it just kind of gives a little bit of balance. It's bringing the color back in. Given that little 10%, or maybe even less than that, pop to the print, but still keeping a certain neutral going. Okay, so let me just bring it closer so you guys can see what we have so far. So this is a good base. Now, I would, once this dries down, I, We'll most probably do some inking in this area. It's just like too tempting not to ink there. Um, sort of to mimic some of this on this side. Um, and I may even add a little bit more translucent, uh, transparent, or however you want to say it, right down the edge here. But I'm going to let this dry up. That's what I do. So what I'll do is I'll do a part two so you guys can come along. So we're going to do this one, let it just rest. 
And then I will next week do a part two where um, you know, I will add, I'll continue to embellish this collage, but that's the basis of it. Now let's do another quick one on using this paper. Now this is some of the echo dye paper. I'm using the coffee stain and the rust. I'll let this <clears throat> sit outside and uh, let it kind of do its thing. But using this piece that I collaged my print um, on the back of and using an old book page, let's do this. Let's put this one down <clears throat> and I'm going to tear a little bit of this off so you can see. Okay, what it looks like to just use, it's just regular paper that we can, coffee dye, tea stain, whatever, you know, and putting this piece on with it. Now, this is another piece similar to the one I was working on here. Um, it's some larger pieces of my Sumi painting, and it's just been glued on the same paper. Now let's just show how we can just do some very easy, simple elements and to create a really beautiful collage. And I feel like, you know, these are just using very simple supplies. You don't have, you know, in order to really make really beautiful, fine art, it's really what makes art, you know, something that I feel like takes you above, um, or let's say beyond, because I don't see anything as better. It's not a hierarchy here, crafting or fine art at all that. It's just terminologies, I feel, that sort of dictates not only intention, but medium and, um, you know, how you're just coming at the process. So it's not a better or worse or higher or lower kind of thing, but it's just a difference. And so in order to do work that you feel like, you know, has more of a fine art intention that you may want to use, to, um, you want to sell, and you just want to kind of come at with a different aesthetic. It has to do with the materials that you're using, how you use those materials. Like, in other words, you don't have to have all expensive paints and and really expensive papers and all of that it's really using a combination of things in a way that just says i really considered this and i'm creating something that's coming from a different place in my creating does that make sense i'm like not a snob with this whole fine art thing and i find a lot of people use it and, and I, I really don't even think they even understand what it means or how it means, because I really think it's very esoteric. And it's, it's one of those terms that was used just to kind of separate the sheeple, <laughs> you know, and galleries use it as a way to make everyday artists feel like, well, if you're not represented by a gallery and you're not in a, in a museum show, well, you know, you're not a fine artist. And that I don't believe, even though I've had gallery representation, and I have been in major shows, including the Smithsonian, Smithsonian Museum, um, MoMA, Museum of Modern Art, places like that. So, you know, though I have, you know, my work has been in those places and, you know, what have you, I still am not a snob when it comes to this thing. I think that it really has to do, fine art has to do with intent, the idea of what we say, the difference between crafting and fine art. You know, you can, you can do the most beautiful work and what have you, and, and consider yourself a crafter or not an artist, or maybe you consider yourself a fine artist. And that's based on using really beautiful materials and, you know, archival. And I do believe it has a lot to do with that type of intention to your work. Really just trying to create things that are that will that will withstand the test of time that if they do start breaking down, like this little piece would over time start breaking down. Um, 50, 60, 70 years, but even as it breaks down, the built, the inherent beauty in it aging is a part of the piece. So something like this where I've already aged it, where we have just a lot of just interesting things going on, 
as this begins to deteriorate over time, it's just going to look better. It's just going to be more beautiful. It's just going to add. So a person who likes this type of art and who would purchase this piece already is into that. And so it becomes part and product of the way I'm creating. Is that making sense? So, I mean, this was very, very simple. You see where I took, took one of our original pieces using the, um, Golden Trinacridone Ozo Gold with various layers of um, pearl paint. Remember, we did this. Go back and check uh, that video out. The one that was using dollar store tissue paper to create um, jelly prints. And then, you know, just using an old book page, I glued those um, and collaged those together. And then this was another using the Sumi brush stroke. And then backing it on this echo dyed paper, just how beautiful and easy. And I mean, and you can still see all the other patterns right here on the paper, the multi patterns that we actually ended up with veining and stuff on this paper. So it's very interesting, right? And just simple. And this one I did more of a grid pattern with where, you know, we use jelly print straight, we use them. Um, like this jelly printing with the tissue over top of photocopied. Um, this is another jelly print. This is just a, a painted substrate. So these, both of these, this probably I wouldn't do anything else to. I'm going to look at it and I may do some additional something to it. We'll see. Um, this one I am going to do, I may do some painting over top of it, more of my um, intuitive scripting. So let's see how these, where these go, but at least this gets you started on how I collage with my jelly prints and with that, with that particular process where I was using the tissue paper. Thanks a lot for asking me. And I really do read all the comments. I generally will either comment or put a little heart saying that I saw it and I appreciated your comment. Um, I do like to respond to your questions of asking me how I do something. I'm happy to make those kind of videos here moving forward. And like I said, the full tutorials are the, you know, the more in-depth ways that I do these, you can easily find over on my studio school or Patreon. Patreon is just a dollar, it's just $10 a month. And I just have made it a flat $10. Um, for everyone. I have a collector's club at a hundred dollars a month where people actually get my artwork monthly, but that's closed because um, I had to cap that off because obviously can't send but so much out a month because then I, I'm only doing collector's club. But everything right now is $10 over on Patreon. You get tons of videos and, you know, um, behind the scenes. And then with the Art Mythos Studio um, series, they're $25 for a four weeks series of at least 12 to 14 videos, um, student journal prompts, all kind of fun stuff over there. So it's, I've kept everything really, really, really cheap in order to interface and give you a ton of what I do. But here on YouTube, I'm going to do these snapshot series where, you know, I'll show you how I'm doing different things and answer direct questions that you may have. Um, about the process. Okay, guys, thanks a lot. If you like this video, please thumbs it up and also subscribe and you'll and hit that little bell so you'll get the notifications so we can spend more time together. Hopefully this wasn't that long. All right, guys, take care. Love you all. Bye-bye. Happy creating.